Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville. Today, something I've never done before, a band review. So we'll wait to see how this goes. Okay, um, so what I'm going to be, it's kind of a review, kind of a test between two different brands, bands, brands of bands. Uh, the first is um, from a local Australian company, Sydney Strapco, with their executive seatbelt uh, nylon uh, band. And the second is the Bark and Jack uh, seatbelt nylon band band now the first thing i've really got to get clear is i paid full whack for these um so i paid full price this is in no way shape or form sponsored i don't think i qualify for that with anyone yet uh the second thing is i have no relationship at all with the guys from the sydney strapco they i'm sure they're lovely blokes but i just they don't know me i don't know them i'm just a customer i am kind of friendly with with adrian yeah we exchange the odd message here or there but again i'll reinforce i bought these uh at full price and when i bought them adrian didn't know who i was or that it was me buying them i kind of did that deliberately so that it wouldn't be awkward in the event that i did or didn't test them did or didn't say something so i bought them anonymously um, i've spoiler really like them a really quick one about my relationship with nato bands um i didn't get them i didn't understand them um until if anyone saw my uh review that i did recently on the oris diver 65 uh it just so happened that the watch i bought there the oris came on a nato that was the first one i'd ever owned and i suddenly it all made sense to me i i like my watches quite secure quite hung quite strapped to my wrist and a NATO gives you that security and that comfort in a way that a bracelet never will. So if you ever see my watch box, you'll see, I think I've got one bracelet and that's on a watch I don't wear. Pretty much everything else is NATOs or, or um, leather bands. Now, the only problem is that no other band that I've ever come, had has been as good as the Oris. Uh, one group of bands came very, very close uh, but nothing else had had kind of got as good as that. So I'd resigned myself to the idea that no third party brand was ever going to be as good as that particular um, that particular NATO. The Sydney Strap Company Executive Series was the best I've found so far. It's a good material, not super silky ribbon like, but it is smooth um, and it's well cut with good hardware. And in short, it was clearly the best I'd found so far. The Bark and Jack straps are getting rave reviews pretty much across YouTube and the podcasting community now. So I thought I'd give it a try. I bought two of them. And as it turned out, they were everything I was after. They were everything I was hoping that um, a NATO could be again. Um, and in fact, in if I sit down and compare it, it's actually better than the Oris in many ways. The main reason I'd say it's better is it's a super slick material. The It's a really dense uh, sort of high weave fabric, which gives it this very soft, silky, extremely flexible uh, kind of feel. Um, and it's it's the way I describe it, it is like tying a silk ribbon around your wrist. It's got super security, but you can have this what you can you can do this strap up really quite securely in total comfort okay now um i've got a a, a bag full of sydney strap co uh, straps and what i have found is that there's a little bit of inconsistency so in what i'm about to do i've got two uh sydney strap co bands i've got one of the bark and jacks because i've got two bark and jacks but they they perform identical to each other so there's no point uh sort of showing them both and then i've got the oris band kind of as a bit of a reference so i was trying to, it's it's funny it's very difficult to talk about the feel of a nato so i've done this little video and hopefully it'll kind of make sense or it might add something to what i'm trying to say i'll try and put in i'll try and sort of put into words what i'm seeing and feeling here so we start by looking at the first Sydney strap code that I've got here um, on my um, Alpina Heritage. As you can see, it's kind of stiff. Um, now I move to the second strap code and on my Edox, and it's still a little bit stiff. It's it's easier, but not as easy as this one with the Bark and Jack. It is just so flexible and ribbon-like. As you can see, as with the least amount of pressure it starts to move around the oris is the same it's got that ribbony kind of 
feel you can just see how there's no bunching there's no trying to now what i try and do is roll it imagine trying to twist it and see what happens as you can see with the first um, sydney strap co it's quite rigid and so when you try and roll it over and you get this kinking as the the quite long strands don't bend the second sydney strap co band is considerably better as you can see it's not trying to pull the entire watch over but it is still quite stiff um, and if you try and do that same sort of kinking action you'll get a kink now watch what happens here when i do the same thing with the bark and jack it doesn't even try and really switch the push the uh the watch over at all all it does is just roll up into an ever increasingly tight little tube even when you try and do that kink all you it it doesn't kink when you twist it it just rolls smoothly much as the oris does here so when you see the oris rolling up it just rolls up into a spiral without trying to lift the 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 watch off the ground now what we'll try and do is see what happens if you just try and push the the band backwards and forwards again with the first sydney strapco band it's quite stiff the second one is much more flexible and it was really odd that they both came that way i think it might have something to do with the construction now again if you look here at the um at the bark and jack one the, it doesn't even try and move the watch it just spins interestingly the oris is f quite flexible in torsion but in tension and compression it actually can sort of bind up and become quite stiff so why is this why does it why is the bark and jack uh so much more flexible so much more supple than the uh, theoretically equivalent um sydney strap co executive series my guess is and i'm i'm not a material scientist i don't work in this area but just looking at it it really to me comes down to the fiber and the weave at the base of the material used by the two companies if you look at the bark and jack and the oris um, and the oris right up close in macro you can see incredibly fine strands of a fiber um, that are very very densely packed so you end up with thinner bundles of material and a very very close weave and i think it's the those thinner um, particles that don't create such a sort of fat lattice network um, that allows greater flexibility while retaining the same level of strength it actually comes down to you can actually measure the difference roughly the same amount of strength and the two bands um, are separated by two excuse me 0.2 of a millimeter the bark and jack uh, band is 1.2 millimeters thick the sydney strapco um, band is 1.4 millimeters thick now on one hand a 0.2 of a millimeter difference in thickness between the bark and jack and the sydney strapco band is nothing it is almost literally a bee's dick uh, but if you think about it in percentage terms that's close enough to a 15 percent thinner band from the bark and jack and i think it's that it's as i said the fiber and the weave and then the resulting geometry that you end up with within the bands that gives the bark and jack all that flexibility and all that suppleness that makes it so comfortable and makes it different and better than any other uh band i've, I've worn to sum it up it's really the difference between cashmere good wool like merino and crap wool so i would say the um it's almost like saying i think that the sydney strap coat is is good it's a good quality merino wool the problem is the bark and jack is like high quality cashmere it's just thinner and finer and more supple and more generous well we are here down at the macro level um, let's look at some other things uh, if you look at the quality of finishing on the bark and jack it is exceptional it's kind of um, if you look at the holes those square cut holes are so neat and tidy and clean um, the round holes on the sydney strap coat aren't bad at all but again the bark and jack is just that little bit better if you look at the end cuts and the ceiling the bark and jack just kills 
every other watch band I've looked at. Um, it is so well finished and so beautifully executed on that end. I'm so happy that um, I don't have to chop anything off the end of that band because I don't know if I could finish it as well. And if you get right up close and you look at the quality of the hardware, Again, you can, particularly when you get right down to the macro level, you can really appreciate the difference in the level of quality where the Sydney Strap Co guys have got a very nice but quite straightforward um, laser etch. The Bark and Jack is just, you can see there's an extra layer of care and complexity in what they've tried to do. And then when you look at all of that, let's just think about it in terms of price. The Sydney Strap Co. right now, or ordinarily you'll be paying about $34, $35 for the Sydney Strap Co. one. It's got a special, there's almost always a special on those. So you'll generally be paying something like $29 to $30 Australian dollars for that, for that band. I've thought that that's great value. I've bought many of these bands. I quite like them. Never quite what I wanted what I wanted from them, but at thirty odd dollars, I figured they were good enough value. The Bark and Jack is just five dollars more, but it is everything I was looking for. So I probably can't see why I wouldn't buy the Bark and Jacks in future, except for. Um, a couple of little hiccups and they're nothing to do with the bands that Adrian's got it's more about the bands he doesn't have so at the moment Adrian's limited to a very it's got a, a mostly solid colors not a lot of colors there's a blue a gray a black um, I think a green but we haven't got a lot of the the options for the different colorways that you do you do get from other companies um, also, um, Adrian's at the moment just limited to 20 and 22 millimeter bands. So, um, particularly on a lot of older vintage watches, I really need 18s. Um, on some of the bigger, fatter ones, I need 24s. Obviously, I'm out of luck there. So, Adrian hasn't quite got all my business yet, but if I need a solid color, um, 20 to 22 millimeter band, frankly, I can only justify to myself buying the Bark and Jacks. I can't see why I would buy anything else right now. Um, I'm open to suggestions, so if someone else says or has experience with bands that are as good as these, let me know. I'll buy one, I'll test it, and I'll, I'll pass it on. But right now, um, in my world, these are the best bands I've found. They're not expensive. Um, I can't justify buying anything else. So that's my take on it. I'd be curious to know what your experience with these are. Thanks very much. I've been Pete McConville. Uh, if you hang on to the end of this video, you'll see a card come up with an email address and my Instagram. If you want to get in contact with me, DM me through Instagram, uh, email me through uh, notsoobviouswatches at gmail.com. Uh, leave a comment below. Um, please subscribe. I am slowly but surely building towards my thousand subscribers. Um, and I can only do that if you help me out and hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much. Bye.